Welcome back to Lanitech Home Automation Systems. Today we'd like to show you a new feature, Blockly by Google, with the help of which you'll be able to create your own scripts in the Lanitech system without the actual need to speak a programming language. Now, in order to start, uh, go to the Scripts tab and then click Add Blockly Script. What we see here is the workspace and on the left hand side there's a range of categories where you can choose your blocks from the blocks that you will use to create your own script. Now going back to the workspace and this base, uh, base block we can see that there is a tick in this field uh, which means that the script is going to be turned off after it executes an action. So there are two types of scripts the ones that need to do something and then turn themselves off uh, which is when you need a tick and the scripts that need to be running all the time which is when you don't need a tick and then you can untick this box. So then we can see the on and off fields um, Logically, uh, if you add something to the on field, these actions will be happening when the script is turned on, and actions in the off field will be executed when the script is turned off. Now, let's create our own script. First of all, go to the device control on the left and pick the device that we want to uh, be activated when the script is turned on. This, in this case, it's uh, the lamp or some light, and we choose kitchen light out of the list of lights available. And if this is on, it means that the uh, light is going to be turned on when the script is activated and if it's off the light is going to turn off. Let's pick another device for example the AC unit. Now if we just place the AC unit in there uh, and there's only one, one available in the list it's not going to be active right away. First we need to go to the options menu over here and pick the things that we want to control in order for it to do precisely what we want. So once we have uh, drop these over here, we can choose what we want our AC unit to do. For example, we want it to work in cool mode with medium airflow and we want it to be turned on when the script runs and to set the temperature to 21 degrees. Now let's make things a little bit more complicated. Let's say that we want to get a push notification on our phone if the back door in our apartment in our house is open when the script is activated. We need to go to the logic uh, section and drag and drop this condition part onto the workspace. Now we delete the default one and then go to devices and pick the action, the condition. So here we need to choose door which in, in our case can be the back door and active means, means it's open. So we can say that if the door is active, is open, then what happens then? go to notifications and drag and drop the push notification message. The message you can custom build yourself. So we say the back door is open, if this is important to you. So it means that if the door is open when the script is activated, uh, then this push notification comes to your phone saying the back door is open. Let's say we also want our Lanitech multi-room system to play the announcement for us through the loudspeakers that the back door is open. Now if we want to add that option we need to go to device control, pick media point, drag and drop it in our construct, and then choose the speaker through which the announcement will be played in the house and then go to the options menu and choose the options that we want to control precisely. In this case the URL and volume. Now let's see, um, the volume is self-explanatory, you choose how loud the announcement is going to be and in the URL section you can either manually type the file path the path to the media file that you want to be played uh, or you can um, pick the files available on your media points so here's a list of media points uh, or you can upload the file from your computer which can in your case be the announcement which you record yourself saying the back door is open save it onto your computer upload it from your computer onto your system and have it played when the script here is turned on. So what happens if we take some of the actions and drag and drop it onto the workspace? As you can see the blocks lost color so now they're inactive. They're only active if they're put into one of the three major triggers. So we have already used one, it's called script, uh, and then there are two more, timer and device event. Let's talk about the timer. So we take the timer trigger and put it onto our workspace. We have two parameters here, minutes and seconds, very simple to operate, and then we can choose how many minutes or how many seconds, in this case two minutes. As you can see it's empty, but if we drag and drop 
our parameters for the push notification on there, it's going to be doing that every two minutes. So if the back door is open, if the door is active, and uh, if open, and the back door is open, it's going to be playing uh, the notification through the media point uh, every two minutes, and also sending us the push notification every two minutes. Let's show you how the third type of trigger works. So we take the third type, the device event, and in this case it's actually more sensible to use that than the timer. So, in the device event we choose the sensor, in this case we want, we're talking about the door, so the door sensor, the read switch, that shows us if the door is open or closed. Uh, the door is active, and then in, uh, the actions that are going to be drag and dropped there are going to be executed. So what we have is the door, whenever it opens, uh, that triggers sending a push notification to the phone and an announcement in the house. The back door is open. And that happens not every two minutes like we had with the timer, but every time the sensor registers that the door is open. Let's say that we want the push notification and the announcement to be activated uh, if the door remains open for one minute. In order to do that, we need to go to the functions menu and pick the delayed code block and insert it in there. Now we we choose uh, one minute and this means that the system is going to wait one minute before sending us the push notification. But then, if the door closes during this time, we pick the else block, put it in there, so if the door closes, we cancel the push notification and the announcement. This is how it works. As you can see on the left, there are several options that you can add to your scripts. We can have notifications sent to our email and messengers. We can play with the date and time, uh, with various uh, types of automation, uh, variables, loops, and other features. Apart from creating your own scripts from scratch, we can choose one of the templates in the template menu. Now there's only one here right now, but this database of templates is constantly updated. So let's talk about the security template. There are options here that you can see, which you can choose from. A push notifications when the security mode is enabled, or media files to be played, announcements, or other things that you can drag and drop into this field actions that will be taken when the security mode is on. We can also talk about choosing an area where this is going to be applied to. For example, if there is motion detected and there's a threshold of motion, um, then you know the system does things that you want it to do. So using templates is an easier way to create scripts. We hope that installers who are working with Lanatech equipment and with the Lanatech system are going to find this blockly feature useful in order to customize the system and meet their clients' requirements. Lanitech. Smarter than ever.